Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I put together this honeycomb storage wall by Ross and Pete. This tutorial aims to shed some light on some topics that I had before starting this project. Specifically, we're going to look at how to orient the wall pieces, select attachments, find hooks and holders and shelves, how to make custom wall pieces with open SCAD, including corners, edges, and cutouts, and finally, how to make custom wall pieces within your slicer. So again, here's the honeycomb wall I put together for my tools. I used around 3.5 kilograms to build this wall and a total print time of 120 hours. For the most part, I used 10 hexagon by 10 hexagon tiles. This standard takes up most of the bed and is an even number. The left and right have this zigzagging shape, while the top and bottom have cutouts, which sit into the neighboring pieces more securely. Now there's an overwhelming amount of attachments, so I'll show you what I find simplest. I used two different types of attachments. The first is an insert for countersunk hole 3 by Rasta P, which is perfect for connecting a few panels at the same time at their corners. This is perfect for securing all those corners to the wall. I'll drop links to all of these parts in the video description. The other part I used to secure individual panels at corners was the hexagon countersunk and hole. I chose these two attachment types because they allow for some hooks and other things to be attached into them, so they have dual function. For hooks, holders, and shelves, you can look on printables.com under remixes for honeycomb storage wall and you can find hundreds of models that are made for different tools and things you'd want on your wall. In the description below, I'll add some of the models I use for my wall. If you want to make custom size tiles, cutouts, edges, and corners, we'll need OpenScan. This is a free to download software and works on Mac. I'll provide a link in the description. After downloading the software, you'll want to download both of these models found on printable.com. The first is made by Wirehead Arts and the second is made by Xander. With these two models, we need to install the Vossel 2 library. Go ahead and follow the link and download the zip file. When it's downloaded, you'll need to rename the file to Vossel 2. This file needs to be put into the OpenSCAD library. To do that, show package contents of OpenSCAD, go to the resources, then libraries. Drag and drop Vossel 2 library into that folder. Go ahead and reset OpenSCAD after that. Going back into printables, we can download Wirehead Art's most recent model, version 1.1. After it's downloaded, you can open the file in OpenSCAD. You'll notice that it has a default size of 10 by 10. On the left side of the monitor, you'll see the code that changes the model's shape. To make it easier though, we're going to use the right side of the monitor titled Customizer. The first tab allows us to change the number of hexagons in the X and Y direction. If we change the X to 6 hexagons and go and click the rebuild button, the model will refresh and it will now be a 6x10 tile. Click the STL button to export the model to be printable. Click save. There's a couple more useful tabs we can use. Next is the solid section modifier. If you enable it, you can see a solid strip appear. The next tab is Cutout, an area for a power outlet or any other reason. Click Enable, and then you'll be able to modify the size and position of the cutout. I won't cover the other tabs since I didn't find them all that useful for my wall, so now we'll go and download the other file by Xander on Printables. After we've downloaded it and opened the file, again we'll use the customizer side of the screen to modify this model. Don't touch the hex unit size, but note the wall thickness and grid depth. Under grid size settings, you'll notice that unlike the previous model, this one is not measured in the number of hexagons, but rather in the distance millimeters of X and Y. To get a 10 by 10 like we had before, set the width to 212 and the height to 249. If you count the edge, you'll see this comes out to what we want. Again, ignore the grid shape tab and go to the flat edges tab. You'll be able to add an edge to any side. Orientation of the tile is very important at this stage. Go ahead and rebuild and save the file as an STL. Now if you want to freehand custom parts and cutouts in our slicer, we can do that with a slicer like Prusa or Bamboo Labs. Import the file you want to modify, right click the object and add a negative cube part. Drag it to where you want the cutout to be. Now we want to clean up the cutout and add edges to it. Under objects, select the negative cube we just made. Copy and paste it. Now select the negative part. Right click and change the type to a regular part. Make the side thickness to a number close to 1.8. Change the thickness to 16 
and then the height to zero. Scale the strip so that it doesn't overextend on the top, but does overextend past the negative part on the bottom. Move it to the side. Duplicate it, but copy and paste and move the other strip to the other side. Now we'll repeat the process for the bottom strip. Note that you'll want to set the infill to a 100% for maximum strength. When you're done, you can slice the plate and there you go, a perfect cutout. Go ahead and print this. If you enjoyed this video or still have questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching guys, see you on the next big project.